Hello. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, the average Fourier series. Earlier on in my uh, last video, I talked about uh, the Fourier series for odd and even functions. And we saw how to find uh, the Fourier series, how we can uh, simplify uh, and or we can determine some values of the Fourier coefficients to be zero. Now, uh, one general thing about um, the Fourier series is that we have three coefficients, uh, which we call the Fourier coefficients. The coefficient a naught, a naught, which we write as one over l, integral from minus l to positive l, f of x, dx or f of t if the variable is t. And we saw that uh, if the function uh, was odd, for example, this coefficient would be zero. And on the other hand, if the function was even, uh, then we would replace the lower limit uh, with zero, and then multiply by two, so that we have two alpha l, integral from zero to l, f of x dx. This is the case where uh, the function is even. If it was odd, then this coefficient would uh, definitely be equal to zero. Now, uh, one thing we said is that whenever we are integrating to find the value of the coefficients a0, an, and bn, uh, we integrate over one period. We integrate over one period from minus L to positive L. Or sometimes from 0 to 2L, depending on how the function is defined. Well, now today, I want to talk about uh, the case where the function is not defined over the entire range, but it is defined over a half uh, range. What do we mean by half range? By the range, we mean uh, one period. So when we talk about a uh, half range, we mean a function defined over half the period. So in this case, we think of a function, say for example, a function f of x is defined as uh, to be equal to x in the interval between, say, zero less than x less than pi, for example, or, or maybe let me just put 2. In the interval between 0 and 2, the function is defined by x. But then, suppose we are not given any other interval, but we are told that the function is periodic with period 4. If you were to think of uh, plotting this function, we would see that uh, we can think of tabulating in the interval between 0, say for example to 0 0.5, 1, 1.5 to, to say 2. And uh, these are the values of x, the corresponding value of the function would be 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5 and 2 again. So that if we were to plot this function, uh, uh, just uh, it will just be a straight line from the origin, like that. So uh, uh, this is the point uh, x is equal to 2 here. But uh, this function is periodic with period 4. That means that uh, there is a region, an, an interval here from minus 2, to zero, where the function, we, we, we are not given how the function looks like. We don't know. So we only know in this section between, uh, in this section between zero and two, f of x is equals to, to, to x. Uh, so if we want to obtain the Fourier series for this function, then we need to know the how the functions look like in this other interval between minus 2 and 0. 
But because in our definition for the function, that part is not given, uh, then we say that the function is defined over half period. So now, in order to uh, obtain the Fourier series representation, uh, we will need that the function be defined from minus 2 to positive 2, because when we are getting the coefficients, a0, for example, we will need to integrate from minus 2 to positive 2. And now, because this part of uh, this section between minus 2 and 0, the function is not given, then we have to think of a way of completing the function this part so that uh, we can be able to obtain the Fourier series representation. So how do we do this? We take some assumptions. There are two ways to do this. We can take an assumption that our function is odd, or we can take an assumption that the function is even. If we assume that the function is even, then we will complete the other part in such a way that uh, the function will be symmetrical about the origin. Because this part behaves like that, then we will need to draw our other part in such a way that the function is symmetrical about the y-axis about the y-axis in this case uh, now we can integrate our function we can determine the coefficients by integrating from minus 2 to positive 2 here now because our function will be odd even now the function f of x is now even, this one is even, it will mean that uh, when we are determining the Fourier coefficients, first we will see that uh, a naught, we will write it as 2 alpha l integral from minus, sorry, from 0 to 2 f of x dx or the, this, this upper limit here, we can uh, replace with, the, I will just write the general one, L, but in our case here L is 2, but let me just write L. So in this case, why did I write integral from 0 to L and then 2 over L instead of 1 over L? Is because the function here, the function f of x is even. The function is even. So in this case, I don't have to integrate from minus 2 to positive 2. I'll only integrate from 0 to 2, multiply the result by 2. I'll see that uh, the coefficient a n will also be defined as 2 over l, integral from minus, sorry, from 0 to l, f of x, a cosine of n pi t n pi x alpha l dx and then uh, for the same reason that the function is even then bn will be zero because now the function is even and for an even function as we saw previously the coefficient bn is zero so in this case we have taken assumption that uh, the function is even the other way we can take our assumption is to assume that the function f of x is odd. So that uh, in this case, uh, in this part that was defined to be a line of this form, if I want it to be odd, I will draw this line in such a way that I will start from the origin here and move in this direction so that there is a uh, symmetry about the origin. So when I do that, now the function will be odd, and that means that uh, in this case, f of x will be odd, and that automatically means that uh, a naught and a n are both zero, and uh, b n will be defined by 2 alpha l, integral from 0 to L, f of x, sine of n pi x divided by L, 
dx. In this case, I will only need to find the, the Fourier coefficient bn. So a naught and a n will be zero. The resulting series, the resulting Fourier series, will contain only the sine terms. There will be no cosine terms. There will only be the sine terms. Because in this case, the function is odd. Remember, this is an assumption. So we, we would have, we can have the same function as given here. But depending on the assumption we take, we can have the case where, if we assume the function is even, we say the Fourier series will have the cosine terms, including a naught, but no sine terms. But on the other hand, if the assumption is that the function is odd, if the, function, if the assumption is the function is odd, then the resulting series will only have the sine terms because a naught and a n will be zero. So uh, the kind of series uh, we get uh, will depend on the assumption that we take. Now, this kind of uh, series, this kind of series, we we get depends on uh, the assumption that we take. Notice that uh, if you remember how we said the series oscillates, the series gives us something that oscillates around this curve, around this line like that, and then it will oscillates around here. In the second case, uh, we have the series oscillating like that. Now, what is important to note is that uh, in this section between minus 2 and 0, this part, uh, you can see this one is going upwards here. It's going upwards like this. But uh, the other one is going down. So the series, the, the series differ. But if you look at uh, this other part between 0 and 2, this section here, this one is going up and this the same thing here. So it is exactly the same for this part between 0 and 2 here. Between 0 and 2, whether we, we assume that the function is odd or even, we get the same result for this part, this part here. But the other section, the other section, the left-hand side here, depends on the assumption that we get. So that uh, if, if the assumption, uh, this one is the same here. But if the other side, if the assumption is that the function is even, then this one will go, the series will move in that direction. But if the assumption is that the function is odd, then this one moves like this. So this is the case where we have even, and this is the case where we have the odd function. The assumption is either even or odd. But notice that in both cases, this part remains the same. So we say that uh, the series that we get, notice that this part, the series will just oscillate like that, whether we assumed the function is odd or even. So we say that uh, the series represent the function correctly in the interval between zero and two here. It represents the series, the function correctly between zero and two. Now, the other part, we don't know whether we are representing the function correctly because it is only an assumption that we have taken. So we cannot be sure that the function was supposed to behave like that. But between 0 and 2, we are sure that uh, this one is represented correctly. So in this case, uh, we call this, we say that the function although the series is representing the function correctly over half the period or over half a range, half a range, because the, 
the range will be one period, but this one is representing this the function correctly between zero and two, that is in a half the period of oscillation. So that uh, we call such series the half range Fourier series. The half range Fourier series. So basically if the assumption is that the function is odd, then the series will contain only the sine terms. There will be no cosine terms because A naught and A N will be zero. In this case, because the series contains only the sine terms, then we call such a series a half range sine series. A half range sine series. If on the other hand we assumed that the function is even, like in the first case here, then the resulting series will contain only the cosine terms, including the term A naught. Now, such a series, we shall call it the half range cosine series. The half range cosine series. So we shall have, when we are talking about uh, the Fourier series, the half range series, we shall either have the half range cosine series or a half range uh, sine series. The half range sine series. So if you are given a, a function and you are told to obtain a half range sine series, it means that uh, you take an assumption that the function is odd, and in this case, the values of a naught and a n becomes zero. If you are told to obtain the half range cosine series, then it means that uh, you assume that the function is even, and in this case, the value of b n is zero. So you find a naught and a n. Let's take an example. You are given a function. You are given a function. Given the function. Uh, say f of x, let's just take the one we had, x in the interval between 0 and 2, and the period is 4, then you are told to find the half range sine series. You are told to find the half range Sine series, the half range sine series. So in this case, because we are looking for the half range sine sine series, we assume. Remember, this is an assumption that uh, f of x is uh, odd f of x is an odd function and therefore a naught is equal to a n will be zero and then b n b n will be equal to two divided by l integral from zero to l f of x sine of n pi x divided by l integrate with respect to x where l is the period t divided by 2 and our period is 4 our period is 4 say that uh, the period here the period is this quantity given here t which is 4 so the period is 4, so L is 2. We can therefore substitute and write Bn is equal to 2 divided by 2, integral from 0 to 2. In this interval, the function is given by x, then we have sine of n pi x divided by 2, we integrate with respect to x. And now here we can use tabular integration method. So I'll have x and sine of n pi 
x divided by 2. Then I differentiate x to get uh, I differentiate x to get 1 and differentiate again to get 0. Then integration of the sine term will give us minus 2 alpha n pi cosine of n pi x divided by 2. Integrate again we get minus 4 alpha n pi squared sine n pi x divided by 2. So that uh, bn bn here say the coefficient 2 over 2 here the coefficient 2 over 2 is just 1. So I'll, I'll get uh, bn is equals to minus 2 alpha n pi x times cosine of n pi x alpha 2 then plus 4 alpha n pi square sine of n pi x alpha 2 and the values of x increases from 0 to 2. Remember we are multiplying these terms like that. Then there is a negative plus sign there and minus sign here. So that uh, minus times minus becomes positive. So that the second term is positive. But remember that uh, when we write, uh, when we replace x with 2, the upper limit, we'll get sine of n pi in the second term and sine of n pi is 0. Also when we put the row limit 0, we'll get sine of, sin of 0 which is also 0. So this term will definitely be 0. And uh, we can just worry about the first term here. So we'll have minus 2 all for pi. When x is 2, we get uh, 2 cosine of n pi and when x is 0 we get uh, x is 0 so we get 0 and the result is that uh, we get minus 4 all for n pi there was n here and we have minus 1 raised to power n these are the Fourier coefficient. The Fourier series for this function which we can write as uh, the sum. Remember a naught and a n was zero. We had determined those as zero. So the Fourier series would be of this form where r is true and bn is minus 4 alpha n pi times minus 1 is to power n. So this becomes minus 4 alpha pi. Then we have the sum n is equals to 1 to infinity. We have minus 1 is to power n alpha n sine of n pi x alpha 2. This will be now the series, and the series contains only the sine terms. Such a series is what we are calling the half range sine series. And as we said again, we are calling we are calling it a half range sine series, and not just a sine series because the function was defined over half the period. It was not defined over the entire period. So in this case, we don't know the other part. We took an assumption that the function was odd and therefore obtained a series. So the series, we know it will represent the function correctly of a half the period, but we cannot tell about the other half. So this, the resulting series is a half range sine series. Now, we can take the same function We can take the same function uh, for the function 
in example one uh, obtain the half range cosine this time we want to find the cosine series suppose we want to take to get the half range cosine series it is the same function uh, the function was uh, the function was f of x is equal to x in the interval of, of uh, x values between 0 and 2 and uh, the function was periodic with period 4 this was the function now we want now to uh, obtain the half ledge cosine series so we shall go we are going to take an assumption that the function is even this time we assume so we assume we assume that uh, <coughs> f of x is an even function so by this assumption we assume that the function is even so by this assumption this will automatically imply that bn will be zero so that uh, the Fourier the Fourier series will be of the form a half a naught plus the sum from n is 1 to infinity a n cosine of n pi x alpha l again again our l is 2 again our l is 2 so that uh, this series will contain only the cosine terms including the term a naught uh, we, we say including a naught because we can think of uh, a naught as being a n but with n is 0 because if we put n is 0 in the cosine cosine of n pi x we put n is 0 here we get cosine of 0 which is 1 and that will give us the term a naught so in this case we find uh, because the function is even that's as a power, our assumption then we shall write a naught will be 2 divided by 2 integral from 0 to 2 x dx remember our function is x in that interval so we get x squared over 2 from 0 to 2 and this will be 2 squared over 2 which is 2 uh, sorry this is not a this is a naught now once we get a naught then we can find a n a n will be 2 alpha 2 again integral from 0 to 2 f of x which is x cosine of n pi x divided by 2 dx we integrate that we use tabular integration again so I'll have x here and cosine of n pi x divided by 2 on this other side so the derivative of x is 1 the derivative of 1 is 0 then I integrate the cosine of n pi x I'll get 2 over n pi sine of n pi x alpha l alpha 2 in this case and then uh, integration of this will give us minus 2 minus 4 in this case minus 4 alpha n pi squared uh, cosine of n pi x divided by 2 then as usual we multiply the, around the diagonals so the plus sign is plus then minus here so we multiply 2 by 2 over n pi sorry x with 2 over n pi sign of this then 1 times minus 1 times minus 4 all for n pi squared so in this case we get uh, a n 
as uh, the coefficient up here for n was 2 over 2, 2 over 2 is 1. So that is just 1. So I'll have the first term is x times 2 over pi. So this will be 2x all over n pi sine of n pi x all over 2. Then the next term will be plus 4 all over n pi square cosine of n pi x divided by 2. And the limits are from 0 to 2. So see that uh, the sine term again will give us 0. So we just need to worry about the cosine terms. So we get uh, a n is equals to 4 all over n pi square. When when x is 2, we get cosine of n pi. And when x is 0, we get cosine of 0. So that this is, uh, uh, this will give us 4 all over n pi square. Then we have minus 1 raised to power n minus 1. I remember earlier we had talked about the value of this. If we put a power n to be an, an odd value, like 1, we get minus 1 here. So minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. But if we put an even power, like 2, we get positive 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So we only retain, we only get non-zero values when n is odd. And so the value uh, becomes minus 2 times 4, which is minus 8. And now in the part for n, we put the odd number generator, which is 2n minus 1. Then we have pi square. This is the values of a n. In this case, we shall write the coefficients uh, a to n minus 1 because we only have the odd coefficient. So we have we have the series we have the series here uh, a naught is 2 and a n we have it here so that now the series we can write f of x is equals to a half times 2 plus the sum from n is equals to 1 to infinity. We have minus 8 over 2n minus 1 square pi squared. Then cosine of 2n minus 1 pi x divided by 2. Uh, 2 of uh, a half times 2 is 1, so we get 1. Then you can write minus 8 all of a pi square if I factor out that. Then I have the summation from n is 1 to infinity. Uh, 1 all of a 2n minus 1 square. And then we have cosine of 2n minus 1 pi x divided by 2. So this is the Fourier series the representation uh, for that function when we assume that uh, the function is even. Because there's an assumption, again, we see that the series contains only the cosine terms, including the first term, which is a naught. Yeah. And in this case, we call this the half-range cosine series. So in this case, uh, we are talking about a function which is defined over half a period. And when the function is defined over half the period, then in order to obtain uh, the Fourier series, we need to complete the other part, the other half of uh, this function. And we do this, that by taking an assumption that either the function is odd or the function is even. When we take the assumption that the function is odd, then we get a series that contains only 
the sine terms and we call it a half ledge sine series. If on the other hand we assume that the function is even, then we are going to take to get a series that contains only the cosine terms and this kind of a series we call it the half ridge cosine series. So basically that's what we mean by the half ridge series. Uh, now uh, I think uh, I'm going to stop at that and in, uh, in my next video I'll talk about uh, the integration method known as the ostro Gradisky method. Thank you and uh, enjoy your time.